stages and processes in classical conditioning. Before we move any further with today's video, in order to understand the concepts that we discuss in today's video, it is absolutely crucial for you to have a good grasp over the concept of classical conditioning and that you're able to answer the question, what is classical conditioning? To help you in this end of year, we have a video exactly discussing this topic uh, on our channel. You can find this video by clicking on the link in the description box below and it will also be pinned to the comment section or click the i button on the top right corner of your screen. If you are already familiar with this topic, then you can go further, but if not, we highly recommend you looking at that video before you go any further with the current video. Right, so having said that, let's move on to looking at what we cover for today's video. So acquisition is the initial learning period when we are acquiring the associations between the neutral and the unconditioned stimulus. So this is the process that occurs during the repeated presentation of the neutral and the unconditioned stimulus during the conditioning phase, which allows us to acquire and develop the associations between the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus. Now, following this process or stage of acquisition, we observe that the neutral stimulus becomes a conditioned stimulus and it elicits the same response as it would have to the original unconditioned stimulus. So, it just means that you don't need the unconditioned stimulus anymore to elicit the response. You only need the conditioned stimulus. So, in the case of Pavlov's experiment, we can expect that when the dog salivate at the sound of the bell, acquisition of stimulus response mapping has occurred. Graphically, we can plot this acquisition process as presented here on this graph. As shown here, with increasing strength of the conditioned stimulus, which occurs during the conditioning process that we just saw before, the stimulus response mapping between the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus tends to increase over time. Now, three different factors crucially impact the acquisition process. They are as follows. The first pertains to stimulus salience, the second pertains to stimulus order, and the final one pertains to the time between the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus presentation. Let's look at each of these factors in a little more detail and understand how they impact the acquisition process. Let's first look at stimulus salience. Now, in order for acquisition to occur successfully, we have to use a clearly discernible salient stimuli. For example, if Pavlov used a bell which produced very low, faint sounds, then it would be so difficult for the dogs to acquire the stimulus response mapping and it is thus possible that the conditioning would not occur. Replacing this with a bell which has a discernible sound will be more salient, thereby facilitating the acquisition of the mapping between the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus and the conditioning process would thereby take place, resulting in producing a conditioned response. Moving on, let's look at the concept of stimulus order and how it impacts acquisition. Now, the order in which you present the stimulus is very important for successful acquisition as well. You must present the neutral stimulus before the unconditioned stimulus in order for the animal to acquire and learn the mapping between the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus, as it is this order that allows the neutral stimulus to become a conditioned stimulus in future leading to eliciting the conditioned response. If you reverse this order by presenting the unconditioned stimulus before the neutral stimulus, then the animal will never learn to acquire the neutral stimulus and unconditioned stimulus pairing. In this stimulus order, the dog will not produce any response to the bell because Finally, it is still the just a neutral stimulus. When the stimulus is presented, crucially impacts the process of acquisition. For example, you start the experiment and present the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus in trial one. 
and then after a very brief time period present the next trial and continue doing this repeatedly during the conditioning process. Presenting the next trial in immediate succession will lead to successful acquisition because the animal in this case will be able to relate the events occurring well. On the other hand, having a longer time delay makes it difficult for the animal to establish the relationship between the events. So if the next trial is presented at a much longer delay, then there will be no acquisition of the stimulus response mappings between the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus, which will result in no conditioning taking place. Another type of time delay could be presenting the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus at a larger time gap. This also impacts acquisition because the animal is unable to establish a relationship between the occurrence of the two events, thereby leading to a lack of conditioning. Thank you for watching. If today's video was helpful, then please don't forget to subscribe to Brain Cyclopedia. Also make sure to like, share and comment on this video. Do make sure to press the bell icon as well for updates on our upcoming new videos. And also make sure to connect with us on all of our social media platforms on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. You can find the link of these platforms both on the channel banner and also the links are in the description below and pinned to the comment section. See you in our next video.